I'm Isabel Lass. Um, I'm an undergraduate, undergraduate student at uh, Towson University. I study, oh really, okay. Um, I study Spanish, secondary education, and linguistics. And today my very, very brief uh, sped up talk um, will be about a hypothesis, not done by me, I have no part in this, um, done by Shigeru Miyagawa, Cora Lejor, and Vitora Nobrega called Cross-Modality Information Transfer, a hypothesis on the relationship between cave paintings, symbolic thinking, and the emergence of language. Um, it was published in February 2018. This is like cutting edge stuff in the realm of Evo Devo, evolution and development. Uh, it was published in Frontiers in Psychology. This is public, anybody can read it. I urge you to after this if you were confused about how much I sped through. Um, and I'm just here to summarize. So good? All right. So the first question that you need to uh, interact with with language and, and evolution Good? Okay. The first question uh, with language and evolution is why do we have language? This isn't the same slide. Can we just start over? I'm going. Okay. First question. Why do we have language and no one else does? Even uh, seemingly really close relatives to us do not seem to possess the same cognitive capabilities that we have. So the first thing you need to look at in order to understand this is to understand that our primary uh, distinctive kind of characteristic uh, is not intelligence, rationality, or morality. That's also another same slice. Or morality, um, but our highly unique ability to symbolize. Um, basically, everything that you interact with in this world is a symbol and a representation of something. Spoken language is symbolic. Written language is symbolic. Sorry, that's not the same. Um, and almost, so again, almost everything you interact with is a representation of something um, and not an actual direct thing. This, this goes down to like the visual sphere as well. So how did we develop this? Um, researchers first had to take a look at cave paintings, which seemed to be the kind of the first example of the human use of symbols. And there are a few peculiarities that confused a lot of researchers for a long time. The first is that upwards of 90% of cave, art, cave paint consists of hooved animals. Um, it seems to only be found in deep, seemingly inaccessible parts of caves. And it found on really oddly kind of uh, clustered parts of walls and not like anywhere else in the cave. So how do we explain this? hopefully with the help of archaeoacoustics. Uh, so researchers went deep inside of these caves and found that when someone clapped or uh, hit a rock against another rock, it created this mesmerizing echo effect. It would have been like a religious experience. Um, and it only happened deep inside these caves, and the highest intensity of the echo effect was reflected in the high intensity, or the, high, the concentration of, these cave, of the cave art. And where you had very little acoustic uh, reflection, you had symbols of felines and dots as well. I just want to make sure I'm on. Okay, to so the authors of this paper, this essentially meant that early modern humans went to these caves and they recalled sounds that they heard outside of bison and herds of animals with hooves. And they took their, uh, they used their auditory modality and used that external input. Okay, I'm still on it. <laughs> um, and they transferred it later and they had to recall what they had done into a visual modality. This is a switch of modality and in the form of symbols on uh, the wall. In order for them to have been able to do this, it necessitates the existence of an internalized system of thought. And this is the first evidence that we kind of have of this. Um, they called this a cross-modality information transfer going from one modality to the other, which is not seen in any other uh, species. Okay. So, uh, but we need a bit more evidence to kind of conclude this. Well, we need a lot more evidence to conclude it. Um, so we're gonna also look at another form of symbolic thinking, which they think is also the development of tools. Um, and I'll show you the correlation, which is basically just time-wise. So the first stone tool appeared about 2.5 million years ago. And then for two million years, there was essentially no progression. It was really sparse, intermittent technological uh, progress, super slow. And then very suddenly, about 70,000 to 100,000 years ago, you see rapid technological innovation basically out of nowhere. And you also see, around that same time period, evidence of cave art and rock art suddenly popping up around the world. So this means, and I'm going to wait until that other slide pops up. 
humans were essentially tapping into this internalized system of thought that they were previously not tapping into. And the, external, the evidence that we have of the externalization of that same internalized system can be seen through cave art, rock art, and tools. And tools are pretty obviously useful for uh, development of our species. So the new picture that this paper kind of wants to paint, I think, is that basically early modern humans went deep into these caves, had this religious experience with this echoing effect. They recalled the, the similarity to hooves that they, in bison, herds of bison and horses and goats that they had seen outside in the external world. They thought about it, that internalized system, and then they produced it in this other modality. They produced art, and that was like the first example of this externalized system. One of the first examples. Uh, and that's kind of insane, um, <laughs> particularly because it was art that did this. Um, and it's kind of a different way of looking at the role that art has played um, in our lives. So I'll leave you today with a quote that has just come up by Shigeru Miyagawa. Um, he's the lead author on this paper. This was done in an interview with MIT. Art is not something that is marginal to our culture, but central to the formation of our cognitive abilities. I think that pretty much sums it up. I hope I didn't mess up too much. Um, these are my citations. It's pretty much just the paper. Uh, I urge you all to read it. It is actually a nice read. It's not too like linguistically heavy. Um, and that's all. Thanks.